Okay, so how about this? I'll frame it for you. I'll try to frame it a little bit. Okay. The majority of our clients, mm-hmm. they're almost always parents. Mm-hmm. They already own their own home. Uh, they're usually like late 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, usually a good size income, household income over 150. Uh, and they're getting the real estate because they want to, you know, create their own pension, pay for the children's education, that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them are in it for the long term. A lot of people have sold, but that wasn't the plan. A lot of people are selling now, but that wasn't the plan because COVID accelerated everything. I mean, if you're just looking at doing cash flow properties, right, like an investment property, then most mm-hmm. likely you want to take advantage of a corporation, both from a tax standpoint as well as a liability standpoint, mm-hmm. right? And And then also from a succession planning standpoint, because what you can do is properties held in a corporation, which you can then pass through to, via secondary will, as you mean you have one drafted, <laughs> is that you can pass that without having to pay a state administration tax right. and with what property prices are today. Right. And often, like, I mean, honestly, in some cases, when I see, like, the kind of gain you might be sitting on, yeah. it might actually be worth even doing a Section 85 rollover, you know, that, you know to transfer the asset into a corp depending on if you think it's a long-term hold that you'd like it right, gets to right. hold. So from personal ownership to transferring it to a corp. And even triggering you, the land transfer tax. Which is a big savings because no one wants to pay land transfer tax when it's really just money's the property is going from like left left pocket, right pocket yeah. type thing. Uh, when can you do the Section 85 tr- rollover? Like, can you do it any time of your ownership? or does I, it I be... mean, the time anytime doing ownership, there's times of year it might be more advantageous to do it. And that's where an accountant like Cherry would be very useful to right, speak right. to about helping plan the, the tax side strategy. Because from a liability standpoint, it's a no-brainer. From an estate planning standpoint, unless there's like an impending health issue like an emergency surgery or, you know, you're going on a risky trip because you're a <laughs> journalist in a war-torn region or something like that, it's it's okay to, you know, do that whenever. But right. it's, it's about just ideally... Get the advice before you buy, right? Because mm-hmm. you'll save yourself a lot of money, mm-hmm. a lot of money. Like, I mean, the difference is like five to ten thousand dollars potentially, just getting that right advice at the beginning, than you being told later on, "Hey, you didn't structure this correctly, or it's going to cost you X because you did it this way." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got clients who are trying to like finagle away that, oh well, we close in January, we set up our corporation in May, and somehow we still want to claim that this corporation was a beneficial owner this whole time. I'm mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. Siri and dummies. Yeah, no, like, they're not dummies, and they're looking for money to get. Exactly. So don't make life easy for them. Yeah, and this is a challenge I think for new investors is like the the you know they're all fired up to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm no different. I, I I don't like all out of a min. I just want to jump into it. Uh, but yeah, it saves people a lot of grief. For sure, there's a lot of wealth out there right now because people deferred vacations, people deferred all sorts of things. People got bonuses for working through COVID. Mm -hmm. People took advantage of government programs. There's a lot of excess wealth out there. That's the the data doesn't lie, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's there to be invested. All I ask your listeners, and this goes to kind of like a final word, is be smart with your money, both now and it's when I do estate planning talks, I always say be smart on death. So think about your wealth, not just for now, but how you'd like it to look for your children. And not just in terms of numbers, not just like I want X to be the net worth, but how are you going to transition it over to them? Mm -hmm. And how are you going to teach them to not just retain, but to grow and leave even more for the next generation, both in terms of values and ideally even more revenue? Because what we all want for our next generation is they should have more options than we had. Because options means freedom, and that's what we're all after in life at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Awesome.